you're completely you know. Um, the way I do it is I, I always start with 1 and 21. And some of you do it different ways. It's OK. Either way you do it. 1 and 21, those are easy. Does 2 go into that? No. 3 go into it? Mm -hmm. Yep, 7 times. 4, 5, 6. And then you're starting to notice once you get to 7, then you've already covered all the factor possibilities. So you should write it in order. And that would be the factors of 21. Number. 12 on the same lesson. State whether each number is prime or composite. If the number is composite, find its prime factorization. So number 12, I believe I said. Yep. 16. You got to tell me if it's prime or composite. That's part of your answer. If it's composite, I need the prime factorization. And do the instructions say not to use exponents? No. So you are allowed to if you want. You don't have to. But please write these in order for your own good and for the sake of the grader, because um, it's hard to grade a lot of factors when they're all scattered around. And I might miss it. Mark, you're wrong. Yes. Oh. OK, um, I'm, I, I'm assuming most of you did the factor tree. OK, I'm going to show you the, fact, the division by primes, because as I think about a couple chapters after this, these Factor trees are going to be really branchy because they're going to have all these like branches going on. And I use this division by primes method. I always pick the first, the uh, smallest prime number that fits into 60, which is 2, and that's 30. 2 goes into that 15, 3 goes in that 5, and I'm done. So did that take a little less space than the factor tree? Yes. But it does require you to know how many times 2 goes into 60. But it actually, if, even if you didn't know, 2 goes into 6, 3 times. 2 goes into 0, 0 times. That's how I got my 30. I'm basically dividing upside down. And you're like, why would you do that? Because if, if I divide right side up, if I go up, what's going to happen if I had another problem before? It? It's going to go into it or the top of the page, and I'm done. You work down so you have space to work. OK, so what's your prime factorization using exponents if you did it? Yep. Benzie? Um, 5 times 3 times 2 to the 2nd. OK, you did 5 times 3 times 2 to the 2nd. Yep, or you could do 2 to the 2nd, 3, 5. Yes, sir? Um, when I did division, my division like goes down still. So oh, yes. Yeah, and um, gotcha. Yeah, you're trying to find prime numbers. So you're actually dividing. I'm dividing 1, 2, 3 times here. So. Yeah, this right here, you'd get oh, you'd get 30, but then you have to divide again, then you divide again, so that's that's where it goes up because you're dividing three times, not just once. But I got your question. Say that again. Um, ascending is the best, and really for you and for me, please. Number eight. So I kind of went backwards on that. Number eight, I kind of went upside down. Mm -hmm. So the number 89. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm done. Do I have to keep going? OK, do you remember how we talked about square roots this last lesson yesterday? Because yeah. hopefully you did that on your homework. I don't know what the square root of 89 is, but I know it's really close to the square root of, you could say, one or two things. Square root of 81 or the square root of? 90. No, 90. I don't know that one. 100. So it's, it's below the square root of 100. So what is the square root of 100? So the factors that fit in here are from 1 to 10, possibly, for us to have to even try out. I don't have to go to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, because if it didn't fit into 1 through 10, it's prime. So I hope you put Yeah. But the only thing is that bigger numbers, it's harder to know what the prime, or sorry, what the square roots of other numbers are. But we'll actually get a little strategy again in a couple chapters. Okay. 
Number 15. Factor each expression completely. Uh, do not use exponents. Mr. A, I used exponents. Okay, that's going to be a point or so off because you didn't follow the instructions. And remember, completely means prime factorization. So number 15. I hope you didn't forget this. Okay, who can give me the exact correct answer? I need an exact and I need it to be correct and not missing anything or added with anything else. Benson? <coughs> Gosh. All right, so you uh, have to have that negative one times all of that because it's a negative number. How many of you got that? Question? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, it didn't okay. ask for that. Only if it says state whether it's prime or composite, do you uh, write that down? Okay, yes. Um, so why do you need to be like two? Because technically it's negative two, a prime number. Because it's not oh, right. greater than yeah. one. It has to be greater than one. So negative two is technically. Negative one's not greater than one. Yeah, so that's why you have to factor it out to get the prime factorization. So normally we would say you can't do it. But you, you can if you take out that negative one and then write the prime factorization. So it's a little way to go around that definition and still factor something out because that's very helpful. Okay. Number 20, find the GCF. You can do it in your head or you can do it with the factors. Um, some of them are easy to do in your head. Some of them might not as much. So 20 is 15 and 50. Okay, the method you can use that you can always use, and I'll just use the factor tree. And really, I'm looking at this and saying, okay, between these two numbers, do they have any common factors? What are the common factors or common factor? Yeah, they both share a 5. So the GCF of these two is 5. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing else is shared. 5. Okay, 26. When you have variables, you treat it the same way. Okay, who gives, give me, why? 7y squared. 7y squared is the GCF of those two. Um, why do we even go through the GCF? Why do you think we even went through that in 10-1? Because you're going to use it. Where? Uh, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah, there's six lessons, which is actually nice. There are only six lessons in this uh, chapter. Yep. Why don't we do LCM? Least common multiple, we don't do it for this application because we don't need it. We do that for like um, common denominators. Are we going to do that? Yes, we will do that more later. But yeah, this is all about GCF for this chapter. Okay, that's lesson one. So do, do I have any questions on 10-1? Please read the instructions because there's a lot of different types of problems they want you to do. Okay, then we move on to 10-2. Number 10, 
It says a factor each polynomial. Your, fair, your very first question is what? What is the GCF? Take that GCF out. That's the first thing you do always. Benson? Yes, completely means prime factorization. 10 on 10 dash 2. Yeah, number 10 on 10 dash 2. And when it says the factor each polynomial, you need to write it as a multiplication problem. So do I just want the GCF? No, because that's just a number. I need it to be multiplied by something. And if you can factor that more, do it. I'm debating how I'm going to write this te or quiz because I wrote it a certain way last year, but I don't know if I'm going to do it for you guys this year. And that could be good or bad depending on your opinion and who you are, what time of day it was, and what year you are taking this course. Okay, sorry. That's Okay, uh, what is the GCF Taylor of 10a squared and 40a? 10a. And what do you have to multiply 10a by to get the original expression? a plus 4. Is this, the question is, is it factored? Yes. Is it factored completely? Yes, because I can't factor that anymore. That's it. Oh, wait, isn't that a difference? It's not a difference, and they're not even squares. This one is, but not both of them. Yep. No, you could say 1a here, and it's still correct. Okay. Wait, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, because it's unnecessary if you want to make it as simple as possible. Okay. You have that method, or you have that, and then on number 18. How many terms do you have? Four. So what are you looking for? Number one thing, you're looking for the okay, GCF. If the GCF is not present, since you have four terms, you can factor by grouping. Yep. And um, you try it out. If you can't get it, even if you move terms around, then it might be prime. But in this case... It works. So number 18. Okay. Is there a GCF other than one? No. Can I factor by grouping? Yes. And remember, guys, you usually can pick the first two together and the last two together, but it, even if you couldn't do that, what are you allowed to do with those terms? Just move them around. Get common factors. But I'm thankful these have a common factor, and so do these. Can you have a common factor of negative 1? Yes. 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 Uh, be aware of that. But in this case, they're all positives. You're, you'll be good. All right. Um, <coughs> excuse me. James, can you... Factor the first pair. Yes. Kyra, can you factor the second group? Can you factor that out? So what's common to both of them? Okay, so plus B. And then what's left in parentheses? And are these two the same thing? Okay, now I can go to the last step here. How do I factor these two terms now? So do you notice here I went from four terms to two terms? And I can look at those two terms now and factor it out. What can come out of both, Lizzie? Yeah, so A plus 3C can come out. And then you're left with 2X plus B. Can you check that? Yeah. All of these, all of these so far could have been checked. 
So hopefully the test or the quiz won't take you the whole time. If you have extra time, just check them. Make sure you get them. Yep. Yeah, you can have 2x plus b first times a plus 3c. You can even have b plus 2x, 3c plus a, right? Because it's a commutative property, many different ways. Yes, sir? So, I think I asked earlier. I really want to know. Okay. Uh -huh. So what happens if it doesn't have those matching terms? Okay, so you rearrange your, like, no matching terms. Then what do we call that? No. Oh, go ahead. Um, like oh, right here? Like in here? Yeah. Uh -huh. like, yeah. Let's say... A you, plus 3B and then A plus 3C. <coughs> okay. Like if you had, let's say, negative A, negative 3C, yeah, what would change. you do? Uh, negative B uh, plus A plus 3C. Good. You could change that to negative B um, and then positive, positive. But like whole different number or something. Let's just say one was positive, one was negative. Can you change it anyway? Okay, well, this covers that all. If you cannot change it to where they match, what's the answer? Prime. Prime. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So if the second one has the negative A and then the first one has like negative 3C? So this was negative and that's negative? Yeah. Okay. Instead of doing they being the opposite, what can you do the opposite? Um, technically, what, what's going on, you're going to move this whole thing. Th I think this is what you're saying. You're going to move this whole thing over there. Is that allowed? Yeah. So stay, change, flip, or st wow, stay, change, opposite. Yeah, that's allowed because of addition. Okay, you guys go to that? This, these first two lessons, I hope you guys can really nail down. Factor by grouping would be the hardest part. Okay, 10-3 is where we have the most trouble. Uh, but did I have a question? Yeah. Go ahead. So right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you mean addition sign here or here? Right yeah. Because when you factored these two, you factored a positive B. So you're going to put positive B. And if you neglected that, let's say you didn't put that, What's going on between these, this term and that term? They're being multiplied when really they were being added or subtracted based on what you factored out. And really, whether you had a positive or negative sign, it's being added. So don't change, don't just eliminate it, and now you have multiplication on accident. Yeah. Okay, that's a good question. 10-3, number 12. There are two types of problems on 10-3. The first one, and hopefully the easier one, is this type. Okay, listen up for those of you who are getting this confused. This is the first type. Did I get the GCF out? GCF is out, or is, it, is there something in there? I guess what I mean is this. Is there a GCF other than one? Nope. So you can start working with this. What is the coefficient of the squared term? What's the coefficient? What's the number in front of the squared term? Because it could be x squared, b squared, anything squared. We call it the squared term. One. If you have a coefficient of one, you can already automatically go to your binomials. You're going to put the squared term split up. In this case, a and a. And then all you have to do is ask, what are two factors of negative 36 that add up to be negative 9? So that's all you're doing. So two factors that give me negative 36 that add up to be negative 9. There's only two of them. None? Uh-oh. Wait. Negative 12 and positive 3. What's negative 12 times 3? What's negative 12 plus 3? It fits. This fits. Get into that. Coefficient of 1, yes. So, so what if it's just 1a, not 1a squared? 
oh, then you're not doing this because this is a trinomial of the second degree. It has to be trinomial. Oh, by the way, guys, do you remember that? All right, what kind of trinomial is this? I'm sorry, what kind of polynomial is this? And what degree is it? Second. Second, right? Second. So a second degree polynomial, that is three terms, so a second degree trinomial can be factored into binomials usually. If it can't, what is it? It can't be, yeah, it's prime automatically. All right, uh, I'll give you another chance on this. Number 14. What coefficient does the square term have? On number 14, one. one. Then you work it out that way. Okay, uh, I'm going to go, I know a couple of you know. Katie, uh, what numbers fit in these two blanks? She put negative 5 and negative 3, and this is how I check it. What's negative 5 times negative 3? Positive 15. What's negative 5 plus negative 3? Negative 8. Are there any other combinations that work? It's the only one. So you, you can test yourself out and see if it fits both of those. Positive 5 and positive 3 work for the first multiplication, but not for the addition. So please be sure of that. Okay, the second type of problem is like number 28. All the way down there. Taylor. I'll give you a little bit of time. Looking at that trinomial of second degree, what's my first step? Yeah, they all have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to factor that out first. I, I need to do that first. It makes the numbers easier to deal with and the factoring easier to work with. So 2 comes out. 2k squared plus k minus 6. Okay, now looking at this trinomial of second degree, does, it, does the square term have a coefficient of 1? No. So we're going to go over the second method. If this number in front, even when you factor it all out, is not 1, does anyone remember what to do? You... Multiply 2 by negative 6, and that gives me. So you're asking the same questions. What two factors of negative 12 add up to be positive 1? And if you need it, not, it's right there. Negative 3 and positive 4. Okay? So what do you have to do with that? You have to split the middle term into two terms. What are those two terms? Okay, so I'm rewriting this here. Basically, you're using all the numbers, which I hope you're seeing here. 2k squared, and I'll go, how do you guys want to handle it? Because you can write it. You could say minus 3k. I think plus 4k is going to be a little bit easier. And then minus 3k, minus 6. You could have switched them around because they... Uh, still have common factors, yeah. And how many terms do I have now? So going back to lesson 10-2, what method could you try out? Factor by grouping. So now you're going to group these two, those two. And again, you could have arranged these if they didn't work out like these. Oh, they don't have a common factor. Switch them. Oh, now they do. Okay. So you're going to do it again. That 2 is still there. He's not gone. And I'm going to get 2k k plus 2. And what factors out of the second group? So here, if you don't like that, 
You don't have to have it right now. So I just factored out these two got this. Who can factor out that carefully, super carefully? I'm, I tend not to be a negative person, but. Uh, uh, Vivian, can you help me out with the second <coughs> pair? What sign? Yeah, listen, when you are at this step right here and you're wondering, okay, I think I can factor the negative 3 out, you do. You have to say, what's negative 3 times k? It's negative 3k. Negative 3 times positive 2 will get me negative 6. And thankfully, these two are common. So what's the final, what's the final, final, ultimate, final, last answer for this problem here? Lizby. Two k oh minus three times k plus two and the order, especially if the binomials could switch. How many of you got that? How many of you understand that? How many of you could get that? Could. How many of you didn't raise your hand? Thank you. <laughs> Ten dash four. I hope this one's the easier one out of all the factorings. So easy. Number two. A squared minus sixty-four. All right. Ten dash four was about differences of squares, and I'm looking at this. Is that a difference of squares? So is it a difference? Can both terms be square rooted? Yes. So it's a difference of squares. So the square root of a squared, a. The square root of 64, 8. Subtracting each other, I have one term. Next term? 8 plus 8. Plus eight. <coughs> Done. Do you like these? Yes. Do you like these? Good, because you'll love Monday's lesson. Wait, why did you say fourth dimension? <laughs> um, I heard it smell. No. no oh, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. Space? Time? Uh, time. Yeah, I think it is time. It's time. It's, like, it's uh, so you have length, sorry, length and width, and those can be interchanged. Depth, yeah. and then time. I think it is time. <laughs> okay, yeah. 3D. I thought, I really thought it was smell, because when you go to the movie and they do 4D, uh, you smell. Uh, have you ever done yeah, that? Like have like you ever been movies. sprayed when you're watching uh, it? Yeah, yeah, that's 4D. Wait, so maybe the fifth is the time. It's possible, yeah. Oh, the original time. Original time. out the movie theater. Yeah. I know. Yeah. All right. Here's a wrinkle in time. Number six. Uh, D21 after, and that'll be the last one we do together. Um, we're going to stay for just like five minutes uh, more just because we lost a little bit of time. I know, I know. It's tough. Sorry. Forgive me? Swivel, can you forgive me? Okay. Oh, and Lizzie. Okay. Uh, the first one, number six, why? Uh, 4a minus 3b is 4a plus 3. Uh, does it really check? Well, let's see. 4a times 4a, 16a squared. Negative 3b times positive 3b, negative 9b squared. But what about those two middle terms? They cancel out. They would cancel out. Okay, good. Last one. There are two answers that I'm, I'm possibly anticipating, and only one is going to be right. 
Okay, Josh. Go ahead. Number time. Yeah, yeah. What's the answer? It's very good, but there's one little thing that hasn't been taken out. Wait. Hold on. Oh. Is there a GCF? Uh, oh. And um, this is six. Oh, two is thirty-two. Sorry. You can't do that. What's the GCF of those two? I heard it. Four's the GCF. Four comes out, and you're left with nine B squared minus 16. Oops. That, no, that's okay. I wanted to hear that because I want us to go through it. Is four the GCF? Is four the GCF? It is. Four goes in that and that. So now can I um, factor that difference of squares? Yeah. yeah. And so you should have gotten four times three b minus four times three b plus four. Now I think the other answer was six b minus eight times six b plus eight. So this is factored, we, and we've talked about this before, right? It is factored, but can't this be factored more? And can't this be factored more? So they both have a 2 coming out, which makes a 4. So that's how we got it. I'm really leaning toward that. Because I want you to always do your first step of what? Factor the G, C, F. You gotta do it. You gotta do that. G C F. Your homework. And you still have time. Don't don't leave yet. Um, I'm gonna have to write this on the board. It is complicated. 10 dash one. You're doing 19 to 25 odd. 10 dash two. You're doing 11 through 21 odd. 10 dash three. You're doing 13 to 19 odd, and 23 and 27, and 10 dash 4, and I know it seems like a lot, it ends up being 19 questions, but you have time, 1 through 9 odd, that's, yeah, I know, pages, I know, practice, they're out there, 